Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And this week, in celebration of Wilds of Eldraine, we are looking at the Adventure card type. Uh, so Adventures have appeared in the original Eldraine set, Wilds of Eldraine, the, the, the return to Eldraine, and then also Baldur's Gate had a couple adventures. So we took kind of a, a little sample from each set. Uh, we're going to throw them in the tier list, see which cards are worth playing, which cards are not worth playing, and uh, see see what the, the best adventures are. So I'm your host, Richard, and joined today with me is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? I am doing good. Excited to talk some uh, adventures. Uh, Tomar, Budget Commander, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I see a lot of cards that I actually run in a lot of my paper decks, so I'm excited to, to talk about them. And Krim, the Asian Avenger. How are you doing, Krim? Uh, good morning. I'm, I'm, I am doing. <laughs> Just you are up. doing. <laughs> yeah, morning. I am doing. I am awake. Good, <laughs> good evening, Krim. Good evening. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I have like one eyeball hanging out of a socket, but let's get this bread. <laughs> All right, adventures. So before we get into that, uh, today's episode is brought to you by Command Fest Orlando, which is happening October 20th to 22nd in beautiful Orlando, Florida. This is the week after Doctor Who releases. So you'll be able to check out some new Doctor Who events. You can meet CGB and Voxy along with amazing magic artists. Everyone who gets a three-day pass or VIP pass gets an awesome Edgewall Innkeeper playmat, and there'll be a limited number of Giants Phoenix playmats available for sale at the event only. Come get the new Reliquary Tower promo, play unique events like Commander and Chaos Sealed, and enjoy a fun sunny weekend in Orlando at Command Fest Orlando October 20th to 22nd. Register today at Command Fest Orlando. And today's show is also brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards in case you need to fund your trip to Orlando. Uh, they let you skip all the buying, <laughs> all the typing time and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value $1 or more and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can use a sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get another 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mdggoldfish. So thank you to both our sponsors for sponsoring today's episode. And with that, let's kick things off with the adventure tier list. So we're going to start off with the kind of the, the new cycle of adventures in Wilds of Eldraine. We have five mythic adventures, one for each color. Uh, they're monocolored. Uh, so we're going to kick things off with uh, Virtue of Courage. It's the red one. It's five mana enchantment. Uh, so we'll start with the adventure part. So if you're not familiar with the mechanic, uh, each card has two modes. The adventure mode, uh, once you cast the adventure mode, the card goes into exile. And when it's in exile, you can cast the other mode, which puts it into play. Uh, so the adventure mode is uh, two mana instant. Uh, Emberth Blaze deals two damage to any target. And then the, the normal card is 5 mana. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library. You may play those cards this turn. Where do we put this card, Seth? So the <laughs> for me, it's like... In the, I guess if B is strong in a specific archetype, it's probably, it's probably a B. I think it's a card that... The shock mode is not very good in commander. Like, I guess you can maybe pick off a mana dork. But if you look at just like popular commanders and even popular commander cards, two damage is mostly going to be killing kind of like mana dorks or like utility creatures when killing like an eternal witness isn't really that valuable or like a solemn simulacrum. So I think the removal modes like pretty weak. The enchantment mode, I think, is really strong. But I think you have to be in a deck that's really built around dealing this non-combat damage to your opponent, like a Nehab or Tor brand. In a deck like that, this card is going to be one of the strongest cards, probably in your entire deck, because it's mm-hmm. so much card advantage. But I don't think it's a card you can just throw in a random deck and get much value out of. Uh, just to also clarify for the viewers at home, our ranking guide, S format staple, A, strong across many decks, uh, B, strong in specific decks, C, mediocre, and then D is like, just don't play. Um, 
We, yeah, we rebranded clearly... to niche, Tomer. <laughs> niche. There, there's Isn't always niche a reason to play a card. <laughs> I never <laughs> said re- that. It's just very uh, specific, yeah. and you need to know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> a good way to dodge angry comments. Um, mm. I actually prefer it the other way because then the angry comments boost engagement. But <laughs> but anyway, this is just like, yeah, this is the B. It's, it's, if, if you can trigger its non combat damage ability, um, then it's going to be a very good card draw engine. It's not, I don't think it's the best one, best card draw engine in your deck because, like, it's still, you can only play those cards this turn. Um, so if you're spending money to burn, then that makes it a little bit awkward. And, like, if you, if you, like, exile a bunch of lands, you can only get one of those lands. It, it's good. It's a very good card. And, like, being able to pick off, like, an Oracle of Multi or whatever is good too. Like, if there's, like, a Mother of Runes or something and you're going, aha, I got it. Um, that's nice. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very solid. It's like archetypical B. Crim. I mean, I. Resident. I think burn it mage. looks. <laughs> That's Resident burn mage. Actually, Crim plays the most red. And the most <laughs> yeah, that might be true. Actually, <laughs> I exactly because of that. I huh. think this is actually a sweet card. Uh, I mean, the shock. I don't really care about. I would just play this as a five man enchantment. But if I get an earlier a chance to potentially shock something, I think this is like. Probably one of the better virtues uh, and, ve- and adventures going into Commander, just because of the dedicated burn decks that do exist. So this is a way to stay in the game. Card advantage, I love it. I have I I have this. What, what do I have this rated as? I think I have this somewhere rated like. Let me see here. Give it an A. I have a virtue of A. Yeah, like I think this thing is like pretty cracked I, when it comes to Commander. Wait, how? Wait, I, so one of you got to convince me how this could possibly be strong in many or most decks. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. <laughs> Richard hates spot removal because you go down a card, right? But what yes. if your spot removal is free because you're really just playing like a five <laughs> mana spell that does something? So in turns one to four. You have, like, a free removal spell you can fire off on random crap you don't care about, and you're not going down a card. But here's why this card is cracked, though. You have, like, a Perforos out. You play a creature. It domes everyone for two. That's, like, six cards off the top that you're drawing, right? Like, any yeah. of these, like, random red effects that just deal damage to everyone is, like, mm-hmm. a wheel of fortune for you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is, like, insane card draw. You you need kind of the, the ritual and the fast man to keep going, but... Like, red has so many effects where you just deal, like, two damage to everyone or, like, one damage to everyone on your upkeep or whatever. Every time you do that, that's just three cards for free. Like, isn't this card insane card? Like, do you really well, need to build around it? Like, as long yes. as you have non-combat yes. damage. But, I mean, like, those... How, what if you're in a red deck without Edgar or, or Kranko yeah. or Ishin or Erdragon or Miram or Kor... Like, there's a huge list of the most popular red commanders that just... You aren't going to really deal non-combat damage. So I guess, like, if you're thinking it's worth it to add those effects to your dragon deck or whatever to, like, try to draw cards, then maybe. But, like, I don't think you can just throw this in most red decks. I think it's going to be, my opinion, like I said before, like, in Perforos or Neheb or whatever, I think this might literally Mm -hmm. be the best card in your deck or very close to it. Like, I think, like you said, it's an absurd source of card advantage. But I think if you just throw it in a random Kalia deck or a random, you know, dragon deck that has red in it. I think you're going to be very sad because I don't think that, like, thinking about my decks, I don't usually deal non-combat damage unless I'm a deck that's built around dealing non-combat damage. I mean, yeah, I guess that's I'll true. That. Okay, so, like, it is not, it's not, like, a every deck card, but it is a very good, like, card advantage engine oh, when yeah. you have the right deck for it. Yeah, for and sure. I, so, yeah, like, it is actually a B. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's, it's actually a B. Yeah. Okay. I'll buy that. I, I think there's more application. So the the deck like Corvold, they're like splashing red, uh, but there are like pure red decks like Zada that also like have no purpose for this. So I I can see that as a yeah. as a B. But I, I do think random red decks that are more focused on red have a high probability of playing this card. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll we'll stick it, it in B. red decks in general. Yeah. yeah. B, B, B. Let's let's move on to uh, the blue one. So I'm just going to I'm, I'm going to start all cards off and see and then we're going to move away up, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh so virtue of knowledge. The adventure mode is 2 mana. Instant copy target activator trigger ability you control. You may choose new targets for that copy. And then it's an enchantment 5 mana if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. 
Now, Seth, we all know you hate Panamonicons. <laughs> so, where, I mean, where do you put? <laughs> where do you put we need. Where's our knowledge? Panamonicon tier list? We need. We need a Panamonicon tier list. Um, so, Virtue of Knowledge. When I first saw it, I thought it was the worst Panamonicon that they'd printed yet. It's five mana. It doesn't stop your opponent like Elish Norn. It doesn't uh, be a creature Yark Yarak, which has some upside as a five three Death Touch Life Linker. So, I thought it was the worst one. But I've been playing with this card a bit. I haven't got to play it in Commander yet, and I will say. The adventure mode is way more relevant than I expected. Like, two mana copy uh, activated or triggered ability you control actually comes up a lot. It's very useful for copying fetch lands, which is something that you definitely would be seeing in, like, a three-color commander deck pretty commonly. And you can even just copy your Panharmonicon creatures earlier, your spirited companion or whatever. So I think because the uh, of the adventure mode, that spell mode being way stronger than I expected, is actually moving up my Panharmonicon rankings. I don't think I can... I don't think I can put it in a... I can see an argument for the ramp aspect if you're playing, like, 10 fetch lands. Like, maybe you could play this, even if you're not super interested in a Panharmonicon, just to, like, try to be a blue ramp spell. That's going to require a lot of fetch lands to be consistent, though. But I do think if you're a deck that's in the market for a Panharmonicon, any sort of Blink deck, ETB value deck, Yarok, or uh, Thassa, or Rune, or whatever, this is an auto-include in your deck. So I think, for me, it's like a, a high B. It's a... Fine Panharmonicon with some upside because of the adventure mode. So not quite an A, but uh, definitely not a C either. So high B, I would say. I totally agree with Seth. Like, you're well, I totally shoulder. agree with Seth that it's like, <laughs> I totally agree with Seth in that uh, if you're in a Panharmonicon deck, this is an auto clue. Like, it's just very good. I mean, this is just another Panharmonicon, Panharmonicon effect that has like ed- extra utility. But like, you don't, I don't think if you just have 10 fetch lands, this is still worth running this and hoping to ramp because that's 10 cards out of 99 that just seems far too low to me like i'm looking at a lot of my blue decks that i have like min um i have brutaclad nemizit myra these are all in my own decks uh my changeling my five color changeling deck i wouldn't run this in any of those decks but if i had a panharmonicon deck obviously i would slam dunk it i just don't think like if you have like even if you have 10 fetch, you have the maximum number of fetch lands in your deck. I don't think it's enough to to say, to call this ramp. Like, it's just too low, too inconsistent for me. Well, I, think I it's disagree, just... Tomer. If if there was okay. no enchantment side, if there was no five mana enchantment side, it was just two mana copy to trigger the ability, I would play it yeah. everywhere. It's like... Ooh. It's like rings, but you don't need to pay all that mana, right? Because rings, you gotta, like, cast the rings, and then... Because you cast the ring, you like probably wasted your fetches already, and then then you gotta like copy the fetch. But there's a five man investment. Hard ramp is hard to come by, and blue is getting up there with colors that can ramp now, like like hard land ramp that will live through a farewell. And you you know you're right. If you run ten fetches, which is obsessive, right? Maybe you run like five or something reasonably. If you're not like a five, if you're a five color deck, like you're not running this because you have green, right? So you probably have four to five fetches, but you probably have other things in your deck that you can copy with this, right? It's not, it's not sure. that bad. Um, so sure, I, but if, if you're not I, running I, the Panamonicon effect, it. you just you just run it for the two mana adventure side, and that's it. like if you don't have, if you're I, not a blue I deck, would seriously do that. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you'd have to try that for a while to see how bad that actually turns <laughs> oh, out. Oh boy! But, All right, well, like there's a lot of triggered abilities in Magic: The Gathering. Like I'm sure you get value off of this, and I I, I am less. Excited about five mana, tap out, and hope I don't get blown out by casting this enchantment. <laughs> uh, but I'm very excited about two mana, like copy something. And that something is hard ramp uh, in mono blue, which is like very rare. And I- I'm-, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do that. And imagine you copy like a burnished heart or-, or something. Like there's lots of things you can be copying, right? A solemn. Uh, so. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, I uh, it's and in a lot of those cards are also going to work with the Panharmonicon side. So you do get some upside mm-hmm. if you're playing Solemns yeah. and Muldrifters and so forth. Like in the late game, you can double those up and get value out of them. I'll say, like, I, I put the numbers in the hypergeometric calculator. If you have 10 fetches, you're like two thirds of the time. You should be able to copy a fetch land on turn three with this. So that's pretty good. That's 10 fetches, right. though. Five fetches, it's going to, it's going to drop quite a bit, I think, yeah. if you're only playing five. If you're what only if playing you play, five, you're down to like 48%. If you're also, fetches and play the if slow you're also, yeah. <laughs> if you're also in 10, then you're like, you're probably in green at this yeah, point. I, I, well I would run, run like if a, I was in green or even well, white, maybe you wouldn't even bother with this. 
I guess it depends Crim. on how deep you want to go, because there's a lot of bad fetches, too, you can play, right? If you play, like, Fable yeah. Passage, Evolving Wilds, like, some of that kind of stuff, you can get up to okay, 10 Fable in Mono Blue, I think. It does trigger off something. Evolving Wilds is not. <laughs> it does trigger off stuff that's not fetch lands. All right, I'll give you that. Yeah. Like, there are some things, like, if I was counting it up and, like, half my deck happened to have abilities that copied itself i'd still wouldn't i still wouldn't do it because i want to have the enchantment side but like i would i would i would you know i'd give you some respect for uh for for jamming it and running it for in other ways too all right crim i cut you off earlier can you push this into an a we got two (laughs) b's and an a the blue mage do you value copying stuff you don't have creatures normally (laughs) (laughs) this is trending downwards in a b for me i i I think that they're just i don't know i don't think you like, like you're not going to – like, this one piece of, like, ramp isn't that good because you have to do a lot to get there. I don't know. I, I just don't like it. I don't even think the enchantment side is that great unless you're, like, doing wizard stuff, right, or, or some kind of ETB stuff. So this is actually trending downwards when it comes to a B for me. Uh, I just feel like the work you go through to make this happen just isn't worth it. Okay. So last question. Above or below mm-hmm. the, the red one? This oh, it's below, below the red right? one. The, the red one's ceiling the red one. is so uh, high. Well, the yeah, the the blue one ceiling one, I'm not is even equally... sure what it, it ranks in Panoramicon no. tier the list. The blue one ceiling's <laughs> equally high. Like just as yeah. much as you can play the red one and have a Perforos and draw six cards, you can play the blue one and like cast some Drifters and draw six cards. So I think like well, but, the ceiling is comparable. Blue, the... I I would say that the red one in a red deck more often than not you can make usage of that that uh the the enchantment side. Whereas, like, in a blue deck, do I even care about, like, half of this stuff? Like, unless I may... Str- and, like, the, the, like, like the, like, the amount of, like, things I would have to do to make this feel good versus the amount of, like, like cards that I'd have to run to make the red one work feels way different. Like, How naturally, you- red will just deal damage. Yeah, but it has to be non-combat damage. It's not sure. regular... No, there's no way. Like, most, most... Your typical red deck that's not burned is not going to be randomly burning people. Like, that's that doesn't happen. You, you, you have more passive burn okay. damage than you know. Yeah, yeah, you whispered in my ears. Yeah. There are... This up. Yeah, there you are. I'm going to slide in front of the red one. Okay, there are okay, I actually like the adventure side more in virtue. Whatever, we got to move on. It's going to be like a five-hour podcast. Let's go to the white one. The white one, uh, it's it's adventure mode. Virtue of loyalty. It's adventure mode is two mana, instant creating two two white creature token with vigilance, and then it's an enchantment that's five mana at the beginning of your end step. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Untap those creatures. Uh, I'm gonna start off and see. I think this card kind of sucks. Maybe she even beat really. Me. What? It's like the slowest pump spell that like lets everyone knows it's coming and will like get you murdered before it does anything so i i'm very against these like very slow late game like it's it's a turn five play so it's like kind of slow right so people have lots of time to react they see it coming a mile away the night token is nothing to write home about i think this card is mediocre i, I wouldn't really want to play what it. What this is actually so of really? these three, this is my favorite. Like well, yeah, I think like, I think if I was a Panor Monocon player, if I was a Panor Monocon player, I'd be much more excited for virtue of knowledge, but I just that's just not my favorite archetype. Um but I really like the idea of virtue of loyalty untapping my stuff. So like if I have if I'm like a go wide deck with like a lot of mana dorks or or ways of turning my stuff into mana dorks, like Catilda, for example, all your humans can tap okay, for okay. mana You're or doing like an unfair Sage thing. This Song is a... of Frailies. Well, it's not unfair. It, it gives plus one, plus, so it gives plus one, plus one counters to all your stuff. So it supports plus one, plus one, like go wide, plus one, plus one counter synergies, like Hamza, for example, or Torrens. Those type of decks will really un- enjoy that. Stuff with lots of mana dorks. So I'm usually thinking like Selesnia in this deck. It gets yeah. to untap them, and then you can use, you can have another round of generating mana on your post combat phase. And I actually do like the, the two mana instant probably as much as the blue and definitely more than the red one because this is your surprise block you guys love fogs and everything well what if you have like a lethal attack coming at you you <laughs> put a random you put a random <laughs> token in the blocker in there yeah, you love your fog you love your fog right? one creature, <laughs> one creature. <laughs> yeah, you know, one creature. <laughs> a single but creature but also you could you could just like you could just drop it when you have that extra <laughs> mana and then ooh it holds a sword or whatever like this is a Richard this is a Richard special like it I does? can't believe you just skip over 
over it. It does look at everything Richard loves. <laughs> it does flip the dowsing dagger. Car, you have to be happy about it. It holds so a dowsing dagger. It's like a pseudo fog. Yeah, that, that knight is all upside, right? <laughs> I mean, like, it's. I, I like this. I think it's another B. Like, I think it's, it's a B. almost exactly like the rest of these cards. I think it's pretty yeah. good in a plus one, plus one counter theme deck. You get the surprise blocker. The counters work with your theme. It turns on synergies. Maybe you're Shalai and Alar and getting damage or ramping with Hamza or whatever. Like, there's a bunch of synergies just for putting counters on your entire team. And there's not that many cards that repeatedly put a counter on on your team each turn. And this is one of the better ones. So I think in that archetype, it's good. I don't think it's worth it, like Richard was saying, and just like a generic white deck as a way to like finish the game. I think there's more explosive ways that you would like want to close out the game right away with a coat of arms or a Cathar's Crusade or something that can grow the team faster. But if you have plus one, plus one counter synergies, it seems good. And I do like the night nice surprise jump blocking. I don't think it compares to fog, but it is nice that you can like flash that in end step and flip your dowsing dagger or jump block a big commander or something. It's almost like these were designed for specific archetypes. Yeah, it, it's I don't know, like that's about to I don't know the how piece. y'all don't <laughs> like 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 I I think this is like the best like the actual best one. Wow. I, I like wow. they're all like very niche. Like they all belong in a specific deck, but of them, like this is the best one, right? I'm actually maybe maybe not one of them. One of them actually is a clear cut ahead. Uh but like out of the other ones, the blue the the red and the green one. I think this is the best one. It's so good. This is so good. I'm sorry. Even if, like, it's as simple as this. If they don't answer this, they're dead. Right? Like, you can play defensive, so you're not going to, like, threaten me with, like, player removal, right? You have to actually break through my board. I, I don't know. I feel like this one's like, has the highest, like, power. And it's the cheapest. Like, oh, it's... It's about the same cost as the other ones. They're all the same but, cost. Yeah, like like they're all the same except for one. But so yeah, far. well, the, the next two are, are yeah. higher. Yeah, so, the next so two are a bit higher. Five. I mean, I, I I buy the wilderness reclamation mode where you use mana dorks to like power out mana and then untap everything. As a finisher, this is so sad. Like Cathar's Crusade gives you the plus one plus one counter synergies and like kills Way people better. like the turn after. Where this is a yeah. very slow ramp up. So I, I do like the doubling your mana and, like, going crazy. Katil does a really good thing because it's plus one, plus one counters and, uh, you know, mana dorks. So, okay. B, you've convinced me. Uh, everything's B. solidly B so B's far. B's all around. Uh, everything's, everything's for a specific archetype, baby. Uh, black. <laughs> Virtue Persistence. Adventure Mode. Sorcery. Two mana. Target creature gets minus three, minus three till end of turn. You gain two life. Seven mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. This Crim. is the best one. Oh, go ahead, Crim. Sorry. Oh, this is funny because it's the worst one for me. Crim, where, where do you put this black one as our resident uh, reanimator player? <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, like, this this is probably the actual best one of them all, right? Like, this, this is like minus this. three, minus three is respectable. Uh, it kills a decent amount of things. And on top of that, yeah, like seven mana, sure. Why? Like that's that's huge. I think the seven mana reanimate uh, each upkeep is huge. So okay, so when I started playing Commander long, long ago in the before times, one of my favorite cards uh, to play was a card called Debtors Now, and Debtors yeah. Now um, is literally the exact same text as the enchantment side of uh, of uh, Virtue of Persistence. It's even the same mana cost. And let me tell you, I always felt really cool casting it, and I kept doing nothing over and over again back in 2011. <laughs> then I just took it out. It was garbage. It was too much are more mana. Powerful nowadays, <laughs> yeah, it it was it was too much mana. Um, and then it became the the number one threat at the table. So I spent my entire I spent seven mana casting this stupid thing, and then I would maybe maybe I'd get one creature before somebody answered it but usually the entire team would just uh entire table would be like oh we have to get rid of it and somebody would fish out an answer to get rid of it and i spent seven mana to just get like one for one for it by a two mana spell or something like that no no i'm not doing that again virtue of persistence is literally the same thing yes the the sorcery side the adventure side picks off bigger things than courage or whatever but still it's just three toughness creatures it, it's sorcery speed it's it's nice it's better than debtors now obviously but it's still just debtors now with a little bit of an upside and no thank you i'm not that's a c for me dog shouldn't nope. you put this in 
wow, you rank this below the other three? That's wild to me. Yeah. To me, this seems what, like what a card you can literally... running this in? Any black deck. Like, why would you, why would you not run this in any black deck? I will run black it in deck? zero black dogs. Like, because the, the so debtor's now sucks. Right? You, you debtor's nail is a bad card. And I'm nothing sorry. nothing happens till your next upkeep. So I, I see Tomer's point about that. I'm but you, like, kills, you kill something in the early game, though. And get yeah, value out of it that right? <laughs> Why well, did you really want to? Did you really want a card in your deck that's a, a two mana? This target creature gets negative three, negative three. And why wouldn't you just run like a like a freaking go for the throat or something like that instead? If that's all you wanted it for, I mean, that's an upside though. Like it is an upside, so it's not just going to get stuck in your hand to you get to seven mana. But it's okay. like it, it picks. It doesn't pick off all the creatures that I want it to kill. It's only going to kill the small utility creatures that you uh, value less as removal. And then the other side is garbage. It's debtors now. It's, it wasn't Seth, good in twenty eleven. It's not good anymore. Are, are, are you still holding the A rating strong? So Me? basically, yeah. any black deck can garbage this in and it'll be very good. Yes, I think any black deck can play this. And I think there's a huge difference between two and three in Commander. If you look at the most popular commanders, Lathriel, three toughness, Eureka, three toughness, Will Help, three toughness. Like, that's just the top five. Krenko's in the top ten, that's three toughness. None of them die to two damage from the red one, but all of those will get sniped by this one. So I think there's actually, like, a meaningful golf okay. between two and three when it comes to removal in Commander. Not that it's a great removal spell, but I think it's a much better removal spell than a Shock. Like, it's going to hit way more. And That's it hits valid. any graveyard. And if you're worried that you're going to get Arch Enemy, you can always just not cast it. Like, kill something in the early game. And then if you're like, oh, no, they're just going to murder me, you don't have to play it. Here, here, here's the counter. <laughs> Why do you play I a card? I actually do it, because once you cast the adventure side, everyone sees this in exile. And the, the, the clock yeah. starts ticking down for you, like, before turn seven when you tapped out, right? Like, everyone's like... Oh, Krim hit me with a sword of body in mind, and I have some crazy bombs in here. And Seth has this Don't. virtue sitting in exile. Like we gotta, if we it, gotta deal with. If Seth. it was an end step trigger, I would be on board with this because the odds of you being able to go to your end step and get at least a creature out of the the battle out of the graveyard is is pretty good, right? Like somebody would have sure. to have an instant yeah. speed response. But you're giving the entire p- table a turn cycle of this doing nothing on the board. It's it's not. I, I I trust me. I I love Debtors now. It's such the, a cool artwork too, and the you also the, the flavor seven text mana into it, right? It's not like it's yeah. going around. So Krim is is so Krim the blue red ones have the same problem. I still think it's it the best. It is the too. best one. I agree it's with. I love Krim. Five mana is different than seven. Okay, I I, I like, actually down. Tomer convinced me. I, I give it a C. We got two A's. Two C's. B, we'll baby. split the difference in <laughs> B. We'll split bees. the difference in B. They all end up in the same spot. <laughs> okay. A single, like, just think, a single reanimation spell, animate dead, is two mana. Two mana. Reanimate so how is you one need day. to <laughs> animate you need to animate a bunch of stuff with virtue of persistence just sitting around on the battlefield over a couple turns before you can be saying, Oh yeah, that was worth the seven mana. It ain't no. No 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> Last garbage. last virtue, the green one. God, this one's garbage. <laughs> the green one. The adventure is a sorcery, a single green. Return target creature or land from your graveyard to your hand. The enchantment <laughs> is seven mana. If you tap a basic land for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana <laughs> instead. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's Dude, this, scoffing. Uh, it's uh, so like bad. Like, it's not so bad. I think bad. this adventure side is probably the best out of all of them. Like, it's most That's reliable. It's a good adventure, right? It's you get, garbage. You get, it, but, it's, it's but then garbage. the other side, like, you have to be... I could see a deck that would want this. It's like, if you are like... Just a mono deck. green ramp dot deck <laughs> where you just need to... Your, your win condition is like Genesis Wave put your entire library onto the battlefield and like every triple effect like you want nix womb ancients and you want virtue and stuff and maybe you could cheat enchantments into the battlefield so you can get around like there could be but like it's not good you don't want to be spending seven mana like this is like a bad zendikar resurgent i don't even run zendikar resurgent anymore (laughs) yeah like that's exactly it you have zendikar resurgent you have so many other things that you could do this, this is, is triple, but it's just, like, yeah. it, this is just but for it's mono triple, green. But it's only uh, basics. Deck. And it, yeah, 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 the mono green deck loves it, sure. Maybe. Mono it's, green ramp heavy deck. Like, I that's mean, it. So, 
so you got to build around it, but it's a powerful yeah. effect. Like tripling your mana is really strong. We've seen Nyx Bloom Agent do some ridiculous <sighs> things. We've seen Zendikar Research do some any ridiculous mana source. That's real, well. That's why you got to build around it and actually like focus on playing all basics or mostly basics, which I think you can do in green. Like if you want to, because of how green ramps tutors basics to the battlefield, you could be mono green all basics or almost all basics, and it wouldn't cost you anything. You could even do it in a two color deck if you really wanted to. Is it going to be worth the cost of dropping all the utility lands in most decks? Definitely not if you're three or more colors. But I think in, like, Omnath, this card is ridiculous. Like, that is perfect for something like that. So I think it's a really powerful effect. It's really good adventure mode. It's just going to be a card that you can't slot into most decks. You actually have to build around it. And there's just not that many payoffs for playing all basics. So I don't think most decks are going to want to put in the effort to only play basic lands just to support this because there's just not enough other cards that synergize with that plan. I think this is like one of the only cards that specifically okay. refers to basic lands in this way. If, if yes. everyone is not Mr. Moneybags, right? They probably have a <laughs> lot of basics and you can actually get away with this in green, right? Because of all of the green mm. ramp, you can actually play like all basics in a two color deck or even a three color deck and get away with it because you're in a budget. You don't want to like fork over $400 for fetches, shocks, triumphs, whatever. Uh, so it's very plausible that you have the mana base to play this. And the oh. adventure is the best adventure so far. Imagine this curve. Yeah. Sacker Tribelder. Sacrifice Sacker Tribelder. Regrowth it with one mana. <laughs> play Sacker Tribelder. Sack again. You're almost you're at, at your seven <laughs> mana for virtue yeah. strength already, right? Why, and you got all wouldn't... the basics. You can fetch anything back from your graveyard, a creature or a land, right? You could <laughs> skull wind, you can get back your skull winder, no, you no. can get back <laughs> your crater hoof behemoth. Like, the adventure is very strong, even if you don't actually get the seven mana thing. And Nick's Bloom think... Ancient is actually, you know, sees play, but it's fragile. It can be removed, right? This is like mm -hmm. a hardier version. You just need to play basics, which green can play I... lots of basics and get away with it. So I actually think this is one of the stronger. <laughs> Uh, virtues <laughs> in this cycle. I think uh, you we... need to run it in a deck that wants to go like supernova with its mana, though. Like you want to be casting like fifteen mana spells. It's twenty twenty three, Tomer. All yeah. all green decks do this. That's fine. No, <laughs> not, not, I don't think all green decks. But like there are going to be green. Like on math is a great example of like just wanting to go supernova with your with your mana. So if you want to go like if you want ramp spells at seven, then then it's good. But it's very specific. All right, we, we end up with three Bs and a C. Uh, I, uh, I think it's a B. I would put it at the very bottom of the Bs, like but I... Grim, why, I, don't you like, why don't you like mana? <laughs> yeah, come on, Grim. Honestly, like, Grim never has lands <laughs> to triple. But the thing here is, this doesn't <laughs> like, do anything. Like, I, I, so, I'm sorry, so Grim, I would you know play Zendikar Mage, Retreat right? This over is it. one mana Snapcaster Mage for creatures. <laughs> yeah. Like yes. the adventure. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's very good, but, right? That's very good. I don't know why I would do that over literally like an Eternal Witness or, or a, like a Timeless Witness. I would rather just play those cards. Like this one just isn't worth what you're doing for it. I, like, like, yeah, like I think it's pretty straightforward. I clearly do not like this. But you know what? Hey, hey, it's, it's you're cooking. If you're cooking, when you make it work, then you make it work. Okay. Uh, so we have somehow miraculously ended up with every virtue in the yeah you know, arguably we don't even know what the right order is because we're arguing <laughs> over it so it seems like they created a very balanced cycle here uh let's move on to uh some some favorites here bone crusher giant oh god uh, everyone's favorite standard card uh is this good in commander so it's it's adventure mode is stomp two mana instant damage can't be prevented this turn stomp deals two damage to any target and then it's a three man of four three creature. When it becomes a target of a spell, uh, it deals two damage to that spell's controller. Uh, great and constructed. Do we like this card in Commander? D. Hard D. Dude, no. I mean, like, there is <laughs> some small like argument that the One Ring has made it slightly better, but I don't know if it's made it enough better for me to <laughs> want to put Bone Crusher Giant in my deck. So maybe if I'm a giant deck, I'd play it. Outside of that, I think it is, like, as niche as niche can be. A 4-3 just it's not like, enough in Commander. It, like, I, I, I ran it in a single deck. There was, like, a Is It Giant deck um, that's, like, if you deal excess damage to a creature... And you draw a card with like Heck your yeah. Oh, yeah. Egg so I run it there, but like 
it's not an all star there either. I I do on my bucket list though. I really want to kill somebody with the fairy's protection up. Like you you use bone crusher giant and then you either kill them with poison damage or commander damage because even though their life total can't change, you can actually stack up commander damage and kill them that way or poison. It's on the bucket list. It's a cute thing to do, but like even then, like if you care about damage prevention, there are better cards like insult to injury that do specifically that. Just like the body is not very good, so it's fine. So I, I, I gave it a C. We, we all gave it Cs and Ds, so this card's mediocre. But I'm thinking it's actually going to get better in the future. And this is the perfect Richard card because my prediction is in the meta, it's a fog it's a fog meta. <laughs> it's a wandering meta. Oh, no. So this stomp part is actually going to be very important, right? You're going to get more nefarious protections. You're going to get people are actually going to wake up to obscuring haze and things like that. But also, it... it takes a dagger right you turn two dagger and you're like oh i got nothing you can turn three bone crusher and then turn four equip the dagger and go for it so it's good for equipment the the body can be relevant for equipment and you know not not dousing dagger but like sword sort of the animus any sort of hearth and home and things like that so the the damage prevention clause i think is kind of important and the body is like decent so i actually think the stock will go up in the future and i'm curious because right now when i play when i when i build extra commander i got i got a game plan for seth seth is gonna play fogs <laughs> yeah, and i can't true. beat a fog <laughs> Wait, like, why do you think right? fog will loop a one but... ring forever i got <laughs> okay, a damage sure. prevention to like get i through, guess right? we call that fog meta that's fair <laughs> it, it's called like, fog you meta. know i'm not running fogs nor am i ever having the budget for the one ring so <laughs> 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 to- to- Tover will be immune to bone crusher giant, but I'll get yeah. everyone else with it. Okay, yeah, just straight up, just kill me because that's it. All right, uh, we have another giant, Beanstalk giant. Uh, so Beanstalk giant, uh, it's a three mana sorcery that you can search library for a basic land, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle, and then it's a seven mana star star where its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Do we pay three mana for ramp for ramp and growth essentially? Just so we this get seven mana body. untapped. It yeah. enters the battlefield untapped. Yes, it does. Untapped. That's true. I and actually, then you get a I, massive body. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this card is sweet. I think this I, card is sweet if you're going to play anything like along that line. Like I put it below cultivate and Kodama's reach in your average deck, um, and I still run those a lot. But like this one, it's more specific. If you if you care about the body, then it's actually good. And I have been running it in quite a few decks and i haven't been enjoying it but you really have to care about the big body that what it comes you, along with like so give me give me an example of what like are you a giant deck or like what kind of deck would care about um, the body enough to want it big big ramp decks so like uh, i have my four color on math uh locus of mana oh log, locus of, the four mana one four the mana one that's that busted and banned yeah yeah, yeah. So I have it in there, and then that's just another finisher because I'm running all like the land ramp cards, and then uh, I will cast that thing very reliably, and then boom, I just have like another like twelve, twelve on the battlefield. So it's fine. So, so I, I have an easy answer to Seth's question. So anytime you play the card draw that deals with power, okay. So the, that's a I can get behind that. If you're drawing cards off Tabo this, Hunter, I can get behind that. The I forgot the name of them. Right, all all the ones that like draw cards equal to the power of a creature. This is insurance, right? Late game, if you draw one of those things and you're empty boarded, you cast this, draw seven, yeah. you're good to go. I have this uh, as like better or worse than virtue. Oh, worse. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just thing. telling you at the top of the stack or the bottom of the stack, okay? We're not going to. It's, it's at the, I would say at the bottom. Which virtue are we talking I'm about? I'm running all over together. You get one choice, the front or the <laughs> end. Oh, it's I'm running this bottom. over the black one every single time, um, but. Thing. I mean, I don't. I, I guess play the virtues are more card, interesting. Really, like the, the problem, like Tomer said, is cultivate Kodama's reach. Usually, take people's three mana slot, and then yeah. this one kind of fights for that. So, but yeah, you have to care. But if you care about if your deck synergizes with the body side of Beanstalk Giants, then it's better I, than cultivating Kodama's reach. And I think this opinion. card, unlike Bone Crusher, keeps getting worse because Wizards only prints three mana ramp pin standard now, and now there's a lot of like. Three mana ramp, but I make a food. Three mana ramp, but I do this thing. Almost like Wrath, how like you can get a Wrath for your token deck or Wrath for your giant deck. It's almost becoming like that with three mana ramp, where if you want three mana ramp, there's going to be something that Wizards made specifically for your archetype that synergizes with it. So I think this card's going to like keep dropping in value for me, actually. Isn't this the same thing though? It's it's a three it's it's three mana ramp, but you can pay seven mana later in the game and you get a giant body. Yeah, I mean, it's like Kodama's Reach or something, right? Except 
instead of drawing another land, you you draw this like seven mana body. This late game thing, yeah. Yeah, seven mana yeah. body, yeah. All right, let's let's move back to 2023. Bramble Familiar, a new uh adventure card from Wilds of Eldraine. Seven mana sorcery. Mill seven cards, put a creature enchantment or land from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. It's a two mana two two. You can tap it to add a green. Pay two, tap, discard a card, return Bramble Familiar to its owner's hand. So it's a mana dork. And also a seven mana mill something reanimate <laughs> immediately. It's uh, essentially being stuck on it. <laughs> It's it Gosh. is almost literally beanstalk giant, right? Like ramp in the early it's game, thing four, in the late game. Tangle four, he joined all over again. <laughs> I don't know why Seth loves these two mana mana dorks that are double the cost that they should be. Wait, you, you need to stack your deck, right? Because it's not reanimate something from your graveyard after milling. You have to mill it in that seven, and then you reanimate. Yeah, they hit it. Yeah, I mean yeah, seven's a pretty pretty nice chunk, though. That's a that's this is an something. MDFC, but a bad one. <laughs> I don't like it. I I view it like me. Uh, I view it very much like Beanstalk Giant. Like I think it's for me, yeah. it's very similar. I had them. I initially had uh, the Mana Dork ranked ahead of Beanstalk Giant, and I had one at C and one at B. And then I thought more about it. And I was like, I think I got to rank these exactly the same. So I moved them both to C actually because I think they're both like they're okay. They're below the curve for ramp, but you get this upside where your ramp spell can also do something in the late game. There's so many ramp options now that I guess a lot of times that's not actually worth it anymore. But I feel like if I was going to play a Beanstalk Giant, this is very, very similar for me. But for Mana Dork just, decks rather than like to a rat. land decks. Like, this is not you know good, what? right? It's it's a Mana Dork, which is way worse than a hard land, right? Like it, it will so die that to a rat. You can bounce it back to I'm your putting, hand. I'm it be. But it so costs you a card and two Beanstalk mana giant. to bounce to your hand. Yeah, but I'm assuming like so that that so the front side is like it's a bad mana dork, which is why I was poo pooing on it. But then again, Beanstalk Giant is a bad cultivate, which is like fair. And then and then the end game, like okay, let's say you're a big mana green deck, you know, um, you've you've ramped all the mana you you possibly need, and now you see this in your hand or it's in your graveyard, so you discard or land that you don't need anymore. And you pay seven, and you hopefully hit something decent. And then, it, then you cast the creature side. You chump block it, dies, and then you discard another land, and you try to cast it again. That's fine. That's that's beanstalk giant level. That's a B. For me. I, eh, I think like, they're. What? I see them similar. I think they're not even close. Yeah, Trim, bramble like- familiar isn't like you don't like it. It's fine. I it's, like it. Really? I mean, it's a two mana mana dork. Beanstalk but... giant is leagues ahead of it. It's not even really. Close. Like you're comparing Ooh. land ramp to a mana dork. Like, why don't you just fill your deck with Lawn War Elves? Why are you yeah, playing far Hold on. Right? Like, but this thing's getting wrapped into oblivion. You the, tap out, the giant's you play better. something, yeah. turn four. It's, it's, eating, it's eating the dust before you get to untap, get any value, discard anything. Like, it's it's just a mana dork. Like, you got to be excited about that seven mana spell. And you need to hold it for that seven mana spell. You need to wait till turn seven, cast this, right? Because you curve this out in turn two. It's just going to die you a... A blasphemous act or something? No, like are we really I turning out? Return it back to your hand. The bouncing back to your hand, I think, helps you're holding there up quite mana. A bit. You have to pay two and tap it. That's three mana that you're gonna hold just to bounce this back to your hand. No, no, no. you get it back to your hand. Oh, wait, I, it's not from the graveyard. No, no, no from no, the no. from the battlefield. You can pick it up from the battlefield. Oh, 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 never mind. No, no, no. This is no, no, no. Discard this is a card C. and you bounce this back. This is C. I thought you could do it from the graveyard, so you could keep it. No, oh, no, okay. No, 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 no. This is a C. I'm putting up C. But the the adventure mode is more upside than beans uh beanstalk giant right yeah. like beanstalk giant is just going side. to be a vanilla big thing the seven mana side can be omniscient it can be a crater hoof that ends the game like the thing about beanstalk is like it's not a very good creature i guess if you're drawing cards off it it's fine but it's still just like a big vanilla thing that gets chump blocked for days and doesn't dice everything i feel like the seven mana side is better on bramble familiar than beanstalk giant but the ramp side is better on beanstalk giant than bramble familiar I think Beanstalk's just a lot more reliable, and if we're looking for, like, hitting something good off the thing, well, I, I would say the same thing about Beanstalk Giant. Like, I'm going to be putting it in, like, a Go Tall deck, so I'm running, like, a, a Return of the Wild Speaker, uh, the Garruk that draws cards equal to its power, Hunter's Insight, Hunter's Prowess, the stuff that, like, draw cards equal to power or whatever, um, and then it's just going to be good if I find those cards, much like if I find a finisher off that 7 mana, mill 7, so... Yeah, breach. I, like, I, I think Beanstalk's better. I mean, yeah, be- I think Beanstalk is sweet 
already. Like, I, uh, you don't have to, like, I don't, I don't even know why we're comparing them, I guess. Okay, okay, the okay, okay. okay. Green, I'm just gonna, I'm but just I think gonna Bramble Familiar is right solid. beside Beanstalk. Every, everything's a bee. Everything's, everything's a bee. bee. Everything's a bee. <laughs> everything's a bee. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about uh, Decadent Dragon? Oh. Three mana black instant. Exile the top two cards of target opponent's library face down. You may look and play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. And then it's a four mana red 4-4 four, four flying trample. When it attacks, create a treasure token. Oh, I think whoever is on Watsi that is has a Prosper deck has to stop. <laughs> yeah. Just stop. <laughs> Prosper's fine. It's you probably know, the person that designed Prosper. You've done Prosper. your job. I know. This is and the person just who designed Prosper is just like, it. yeah, this will fit perfectly in my Prosper. I'm so tired of it. I've like, I've locked the word Prosper on Twitter because I was tired of it. It's like the new Paradox engine. And it's like, oh, this is good for Prosper. And like, no, I don't care. Of course it's good to Prosper. It exiles and, and makes treasures. Yes, I get it. It's I fine. put this Whatever. as an A. I think, yeah. honestly, it might be a B, but I put it as an A because people love stealing their opponent's cards. Like, I think those cards always are, like, more played than they probably should be just because people love getting your opponents that way. And this is a pretty effective way to do it. The big downside is it doesn't fix your mana. So I think the the B aspect of the card is you probably got to be a treasure deck, sort of, to, like, actually well, it, cast it, it the cards. It makes well, make as a dragon to help you cast... Whatever well, yeah, you have to. Opponent. So you steal your opponent's cards, and you're gonna cast the dragon. Around. Then it has to lose summoning sickness, and not get wrath, and attack a couple times. So like, it can do it itself. But I think it's gonna be a, like a staple in treasure style decks or pros- prosper style decks, if we're allowed to say the the p word on the cast. But block band. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I it's a draw two for three that becomes a four four that makes a treasure. Is that not just like a good card? Is that not good yeah, enough don't you just for put like that every deck? And like, can it, I, be, I think it's sweet. You play Why wouldn't exotic you play orchard it? or whatever in your mana base yeah. to make sure you can cast things. Fell War Stone, which everyone's playing. It's not that I mean, far. And you're playing red. Like, you're making treasures anyway, right? Like, right. this is not, if you're making treasures, this is yeah. not some weird color combination that you, you can't achieve. And it curves oh. perfectly. And it has trample for some. I don't know why it has flying and trample. Like, yeah, it's getting trample. I mean, I think it's solid. Yeah, just because of all those reasons. I'll be the devil's advocate. And all I'll say that uh, the adventure side is not very good. Um, the reason why. So. People could look at it and say, like, oh, it's basically draw two, right? But the problem is that you're drawing from your opponent's deck. And the the problem with that is that in 2023, decks are very synergy-focused. Everybody's running a lot of cute cards that work in the context of their own deck, and they're moving away from less and less staples. Like, uh, five years ago, six years ago, everybody was running just generic good stuff decks, and we were moving more and more towards synergy only. So if you, like target somebody who's an artifact deck and you're not an artifact deck you're going to be getting probably artifact payoffs and like weird janky stuff that might not be super useful you or you target like the goblin deck like you're going to get some goblins like you don't want goblins and you're not goblin deck so that's why i think these type of effects these theft effects are getting worse and worse as years are going by that said like both both aspects of the card is pretty good. The fact that you're getting both of them together is good. But I just don't think stealing from my opponent's uh, library is that used. Like stealing randomly off the top of my opponent's library is that good anymore? Like Gaunti effects are just not are getting worse and worse over the years. So I disagree with I that. Put this a the B. one ring to fairies pro removal sweepers. There's plenty of, and and the thing is you get to choose who you target, right? It's not like a random point. You'd be like, yeah. who's the person who is most likely has cards that I can use? So although it's not a straight draw to, it's better than a scry to. I, I, would, I would say it's like a draw. Better than a scry to, 1. yeah. 1.5. I think the biggest downside is you don't have the mana to cast it, right? Like if, if it fixed the colors, then this would be insane. Like I'm fine with drawing my opponent's cards, but, oh, you know, uh, if, they're, if, they're, if there's a like cryptic command, them, you're like, wow, this is awkward. I could never <laughs> cast this ever again, right? So... I mean, you can target the person who's in similar colors than you, too. So, like, that's oh, yeah, another yeah. easy way to get around it. Like, target the Rectos player or whatever, just so you can try to make use of their cards. I think it's really good. I think it's, like, either yeah. a high B or a low A. Like, somewhere in that range. But if we want to put it in A, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to argue against right. that. I'm sticking it in A. It's our, yeah. it's our breaker yeah. here. We finally broke out B. of B. <laughs> if the body alone is, is respectable. So, like, I, I, like, what the threat does, sure. Like, I, I'm happy to have that happen. Meh. Okay. Uh, speaking of dragons, we have a green dragon, Emerald Dragon, from Baldur's oh, yeah. Gate. It's an uncommon. 
Three mana dragon. instant. Counter target activated or triggered ability from a non-creature source. Six mana, four, four, <laughs> flying trample. <laughs> Do we care about weird stifle in green? All right. Everyone is wow. laughing, so I say that no. So but bad. no. Do no, we wait, care wait. about weird stifle? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There's run no this way so... this is the card that, like, tickles your fans. So this, is, this is in my paper collection, all right? This is in my paper what, what deck. deck is it? my, it's over. It's in my six-drop deck, all right? <laughs> oh, so, that look does at the mana is not good. No. 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 Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. So this is not the best card in my deck, but it is the best card in my deck because this actually happened. Uh, somebody did Aether Flux Reservoir targeting me, and I countered it. I'm glad Can that you happened. Imagine? I'm glad that Can happened you to you once, but I will still like, never put this in my deck. Was it worth playing a six <laughs> yeah. yeah. or all the other I games? Mean, if, prob- if you're building around the restriction that every <laughs> card in your deck has to cost six mana, this card's probably great because it does something Amazing. for three mana. So it's actually probably really good if that is your restriction. Outside of that very, so very specific <laughs> restriction, a three mana stifle that doesn't even stifle everything does not get me excited. It is kind of funny yeah. that it's green, but it's there's green actually gotcha. a lot of it's old like green. Type, it's, it's a green, a green gotcha. gotcha card. <laughs> Aren't there a lot of like, bind in... I think there's a lot of old green cards that do similar things that are even it's better like if you just want to get people. Yeah, but then you get a dragon, and it flies. It's not green. Really a good it's dragon. It's like a very bad but dragon, But it's a though. flyer in green. <laughs> it's it's yeah, a two mana four four. Mark yeah. Rosewater is just... He's he, he's just getting grumpier every single second All he right. looks at this we're, card. We're checking it in D, okay? You have to be a gotcha deck or six <laughs> gotta, tribe. You have to be Tomer. Like, this you got to so be literally Tomer. There's Tomer. dozens of us. There's dozens of us. All right. <laughs> Giant Disrespect. Killer from the original Eldraine. Three mana instant. Destroy target creature with power four greater. It's a one mana one two. Two mana tap tap target creature. Human peasant. Is I feel playable? like this almost underrated. I, this card is great. Yeah, I think it's also underrated. This this like what like this is a sweet spot removal that can also uh-huh. like just be an annoying tap like a tapper over time, which it goes well. Like it's more of like a specific deck because I do love this in my humans deck. Uh, this one's absolute house there. Yeah, it's got a. Y'all don't run this card. Get it's out of here. It's got a relevant. I've never seen a single type. dying killer I, in in the seven plus years of of Commander Clash. <laughs> I've never seen a giant killer. I, it is literally oh. in my humans deck. This card is I've sick, never dude. Seen it. Underrated. I've never seen it. Y'all don't underrated. run this card. Underrated. So underrated that we ourselves didn't play. This card is doo doo. I might. You're, you're all lying. You to just yourselves. argued for the dragon. I might because it's a it's a it, it's a house. It's not a six drop. Giant killer's giant killer's not a six drop, so it's no no good trash garbage. Is, um, yeah, if it was six more mana, I mean, or I, five more mana. Maybe I'm overrating it because I'm playing Hilda on the next Commander Clash we're doing as my first like Wild Eldraine Commander, and this was the one tapper that That's actually made the Hilda deck. Uh, Hilda just wants you to tap things, and it gives you value if you tap your opponent's stuff. And I think this, like, I avoided playing all the other tappers because I didn't feel like they had enough upside. Just, like, a one mana one one that, like, pay a mana, tap it to tap something. That doesn't really get me excited. This, like, actually kills a big thing if you need it to, and then it can tap something down. So I think if you're in the market for a tapper, it's actually, like, pretty effective. And it's, like, a repeatable removal spell, right? You kill something, and then you can tap down that Voltron commander throughout the game. So I'm not arguing it's an A or anything, but I don't think the card's, like, complete trash. I I would argue it's a B. Like, it's good in Hilda. (laughs) Did you know? Y'all are not spending two mana (laughs) and tapping this to tap down a creature. You're not. You're not. In the comments, there's someone who keeps track of number of days since Richard last mentioned Swords to Plowshares. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine Swords to Plowshares that draws you a card because you're playing white and you have all the stupid, like, white dorks that trigger (sighs) off of this. So you can use it as removal. And then you can play it, draw a card off Welcoming Vampire, and then you can sit around and tap things down, which I think is severely underrated, by the way. And then it also triggers human synergies. Yes. I think Swords of Plowshare is I bad. Is yes. Spending two mana on tapping a creature, good. No, you know what? Swords of Plowshare is bad, but one pa- mana, one pass two. The That's where it's at. Pass the Kool Aid. I want to sip. I don't believe any of you all are, are on something. Something over here. You, you know what? We're if I about count the number of times we played Eddie's Avengers, I bet you Giant Killer is going to be one of the most played adventures. All right. This season. What are you going to do? You're going to put it at A? You're going to put it no, at no, no, Giant no. Killer? I think you actually down to a B. All right. We'll, we'll put all it somewhere right. here. But uh, in front of Beanstalk Giant, but it actually has a point in like human decks and weenie decks, right? Is like, it, there's actually a purpose for this card. 
it's g- it's playable in Hilda. I'll, hey, I'll say that. There we go. But you, you, put, right. you, put Emerald, you put Emerald Dragon in D because it's good <laughs> it in, in six drop. Hilda. But then you say, oh, well, Hilda. That is well, literally Hilda, so the that's most niche card. Hilda's you know okay. what? Yes. You know what? Let's move I, on. I, I, Let's I, move I on. think I'm six drop tribal is it. more niche than humans. Yes, I would agree <laughs> yeah, with that. You wanna re- <laughs> it's not good in humans. Homer's the only one. It was in Baragon. It's not good in humans. What are you saying again? It's not good in humans. All right. Not worth uh, it. Speaking of humans, how about this black human? We have Gumdrop Poisoner. Uh, it's an instant one mana. Create a food token. That's it. One mana create a food token. It's a three it's mana three two life link. When it ETBs, up to one target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Uh, what do we think about Gumdrop? Was this Gumdrop? I can't even tell. I think this is Gumdrop. Is this Gumdrop? Yeah. Come drop poisoner. No, yes, okay. Uh, good, bad. I think this is a a very B E card. So it makes a food. I guess the idea of the card is you like make the food, then sack the food, then play it, and give something negative three, negative three. That's not very good. I've actually like tried that in standard, and it's really slow and clunky. Even in standard, and in standard creatures are smaller, so it's not going to work in commander. But if hot you're trash. a deck that can gain life without spending a bunch of mana like there's a bunch of black white life gain decks karlov or uh lsl core or kemball or something where your commander is just like incidentally gaining you a bunch of life then this is pretty decent like it's a three two life linking body which wears an equipment or whatever you can sacrifice it for value and it's probably like a hard removal spell like a three mana ravenous chupacabra or something so in that very specific archetype i like it but don't play it outside of like i'm playing a food deck or a life gain deck essentially I totally agree. Like, if I was playing Frodo and Sam and upgraded my deck, I'd probably run this. Yeah. Because, like, I'm going to, I have the crack of food anyway just to uh, trigger Frodo every single turn. So, you know, if I, I can pick off small creatures and then if I crack another food for one, one additional mana, then I can just kill basically anything on the board. That's that's fine. And it has lifelink, so it triggers it your life gain stuff in combat. Yeah. So I think in, like, that context, it's decent. Outside of that, it's it's kind of trash. I, I, I think it's hot doo doo. <laughs> this one's a hot doo doo. Wait, so you're true. not putting this in your human deck? I thought, I thought no, we all smoke that here. shows you that like clearly it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Giant Killer is a house, no, a proven no winner. No, we're by leaving the way. Giant Killer alone. <laughs> like, do you guys play Ravenous Chuka, Chupacabra or Necrotal? Like, that's not yeah, a good sometimes, effect. And sometimes in your food deck, you're gonna pay one mana to make a food. Like, that's yeah. Not, yeah. I was like churning out food with yeah. Bilbo and Sam and whatever. Like, are you really going to be doing this? I feel the this hobbits got to eat. Yeah, the hobbits got to eat. They're, they're hungry. Decks. They're hungry, think, Richard. They're hungry. I think this is a doo doo D for doo doo. <laughs> Instant speed. Wow. Oh boy. Wait. It's so would you rank doo-doo. this like one of the worst of cards yes. we've talked about? Wow. Yes. What? Like, even for... if I was a food deck, I would be looking. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to make like a single food token, right? And I'm not. <laughs> Like, just play instant speed removal if you care about removal. Like, it's not worth... But it, it, it's... It, usually, it will... Con, it will consi- Like, in the food deck, it will consistently just kill it. It will be a ravenous chupacabra for three mana. You, you can play also those? make a food. Like, who plays sorcery yes. speed? <laughs> like, I run ravenous chupacabra. Like, like, I, right? I have like, a braids deck, and I, I play it in braids, because then I just kill yeah, something, and then I sacrifice it for value. It. Like, it's good. It's fine. Yeah. Blink it? Glonty yeah. decks will like it, too? Well, yeah. okay. It exists. Well, I, I guess it if, sure if, exists. Oh wait, sorry. Here, you have I'll put it above so Emerald Dragon. Okay, here, I'll what? put it behind. Wow. Okay, no, okay. This is rigged. I can deal with a C if we, we're splitting we, we the average difference. Average down to a C, right? Some Bs and fine. some Ds. That's that's yeah, fine. Yeah, C is fine. fine. All right. Since you guys love spot removal on bodies, let's do Murderous Rider. <laughs> let's do Murderous hey, Rider. Hey, this card is sick. So three mana instant destroy target creature or planeswalker. You lose two life, and then three mana two three life link. When it dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. If it made a like food, three mana if it made a food becomes... maybe I'd be in, interested. But <laughs> D, no food, no D. food, no play. <laughs> Hobbits are hungry. I mean, it's filler, I think it's right? It's pretty fillery. I, I like it's it a little bit more filler. in like a night deck or a zombie deck because it's those creature types. But then otherwise, it's like yeah, it's fine, whatever. That's kind of where I'm at. Like if I if I really want a removal spell and I'm playing uh, a tribe that its creature types are, then I would play this card maybe. But 
Otherwise, I don't think it's good enough. There's, like, a lot of good removal of Exiles or hits non-creatures in Planeswalkers. So I don't think it makes the cut as a generic removal spell. You need a specific reason to put it in your deck, which is pretty C-ish, I think. Chris, yeah. Mr. S- when you play 10 spot removal spells, does this make it <laughs> into the list? Is this playable? It, play, it plays around the mill. It plays <laughs> around the mill. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it defeats what? the mill and mouth plan? Yeah. Wait, it, it has to go from the battlefield to the It has to die over the bottom of the to deck. Get back. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you have this, you have Ashnod's Altar. That's sick. And somebody's playing a mill deck, and you're like, got him. Got him. Got him. They feel <laughs> silly now. <laughs> and then they mill you again, and it just. Then you're just dead. But okay. They're too good. They're too good at that point. <laughs> All I do right, think cool. this is good in like a specific deck though. Like very much so has to be like 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 a zombie deck can definitely use this. Yeah, like knights like you had mentioned, but I don't know. I I, I it's good in that kind of deck, otherwise I wouldn't probably play it. The the body's just so mediocre, right? And then the removal is pretty mediocre too, so you're not really excited. And even in knights or zombies, like am I really playing this? I feel it's on the chopping block, even if it sure. makes the deck. Like, it's it's down there to be cut the next time we get a new knight or zombie. So, uh, be- better or worse than Gumdrop, Seth? <laughs> oh, oh. Better. Better. Leagues better. No, th- there's no way, right? Like, I don't know about leagues, leagues but I-, I will say Bone Crusher being in the same pile as those cards is weird to me. That, should, that feels like an uh, Emerald Dragon, but... um. I'm gonna say whoa, whoa, whoa. leave Emerald Dragon standard. out of this. Seth. I'm gonna I say, was with I'm gonna you say it's, it's better. I'm gonna say it's better. Okay, than I, I, I'm gonna move Murderous Rider to the top of C class. Okay, <laughs> poor Gumdrop it, 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 does not get the respect <laughs> it deserves. Poor, poor, poor Gumdrop. Uh, okay, poor Emerald uh, Dragon. What's going on? <laughs> Justice for Emerald Giant. Dragon. Original uh, Eldrain card, five mana. Sorcery, destroy all non-giant creatures. Seven mana, seven seven vigilance. Do you play this mediocre wrath for the seven seven vigilance body? Helps I mean, you rebuild. It's literally one of the best <laughs> cards in a giant deck. Like that's that's his point. It's a one sided board wipe for giants. Like okay, okay, uh, yes. This mono it has to be a white giant deck, right? <laughs> to to run this. But well, outside of white giants, um, well, okay. So first of all, changelings. Travel, travel, obviously, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, yes. Sure. Wait, wait. Yes. There's, there's more than there's more than six shots. You, you, you make fun of six shots. This is good change, for seven drop tribal. I get that. Yes. yes. Seven drop tribal. We're very good. <laughs> okay, seven drop. Okay, fine. Yes, but but okay. So the outside of giants, has, do you play this card like ever? No, but it's it's the best. It's a bet. One of the best cards for a giant deck. Like literally, one sided wraths are just the best cards you can put in most but decks. Aren't giant decks usually like is it or something? Like there's not really in cow time. Yes, but like um, there's Kalemni, for example, is oh, the Boros okay. giant leader and stuff. There's I, like there's I giants don't... in red. It's primary red, but then it's also yeah. in white too. Lorwyn giants are also um, uh, Boros. I, I am is l- actually looking at EDA track, and it seems like Agar, the excess damage one that we mentioned earlier, is like by far the most played. But then behind that, there's like four white, red, or is it one? So I think if you're in white and you're a giant deck, this card is great. Otherwise, it's not worth. Krim, do you play this as like I get to ra- wrath number ten plus I get a big body? Like you play more wrath than anyone. Does this ever seven, make the cut outside of giants? Ones? No, it's just it's it's like. Only really good in giants, to be honest with you. Like I, I don't know how I have this at an A. I, I must be what? Uh, like high out of my mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. This what is a B. I mean, you what put a giant at, killer at up there, so maybe everything giant that killer says is giants correct. in it. What about giant that has killer giants is in it? Just say easy I, A. What about the know. beanstalk argument of like oh, I'm gonna return to the wild speaker and draw seven cards, so I'm way better than yeah, Brandon familiar. Say Selesnia, because you also have beanstalk giant. <laughs> you can also Ooh. cast it much more. You can cast, cast it much more reasonably. And then draw a ton of cards because you're playing that. But <laughs> we cook today. It, like I, I, I'm cutting like I, I'm austere kind of command from my deck because I, I don't have space to put austere command or even farewell gets cut because I don't have space for it. Like I don't see how I could ever jam this in with this. a straight face outside yeah. of like giant tribal right like you know like yeah you know, obviously if you're playing something super niche like that then yeah but as a staple S- wrath like would you play wrath okay would you play wrath of god or would you play this i do play wrath of god over this <laughs> i think i, play oh, I wouldn't run wrath of god i don't think i've ever put realm cloak giant in a deck that isn't a giant deck i'm pretty sure that i never yeah, have I wouldn't either 
And so is that a B or a C? Because it feels like the problem is Giants every is adventure so feels like nobody so plays niche. that. Yeah. Right? No, but it's strong in specific decks. It's literally the best. It's but one yeah, of the best no, parts of the deck. Right, 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 right. 0.001% of the population. Yeah. And Changelings. <laughs> em- em- Emerald Dragon, changelings. really good in We're Six growing. Drop Tribal. That's still in the D pile. <laughs> I mean, I, how about no, C? How about a C? Like, to split the difference a little bit. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put it at the bottom of C, okay? Okay. That works. Uh, <sighs> all right. A, a, a Baldur's Gate card. Tilanali's Hunter? Tilanali Hunter? Uh, two uh-huh. mana sorcery. Exile target creature card from your graveyard until the end of your next turn. You may cast that card. And then seven mana, seven, seven trample. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a creature spell uh, you cast from exile. And, you know, when you have adventure creatures, they are cast from exile when you cast them for their creature side. So that's that's the synergy there. Well, like, it was made for the it was made for the Gruul Prosper deck. I forget the name of it. Faldorn, I think. Yeah. Faldorn. So it's a Faldorn card. Um, it's good for adventures, too. And what I like about it is seven mana is a lot, but you get a seven seven trample that's a big body, and the turn you cast it, you can immediately cast your like adventure spell from exile, or if you did some uh, impulse draw with red, you can immediately get that val. You can immediately get your mana worth back on the same turn, which is really nice. And um, the adventure side is also fine. Like it's a it's like a crappier regrowth, but it does the job just fine, like mid to late. So. Yeah, I like it. It's a B for for adventure and Faldorn. I like just Faldorn. I like that the the creature side actually has trample. If I'm going to play these big dorky creatures, I really like that they have some sort of evasion built in compared to like Beanstalk Giant. I think it's pretty pretty B. I think it's worth it in adventure decks, but I don't think I'd play it in just a generic green deck. But Faldorn. I, and Faldor. I like, yeah, Prosper. Is... If you're playing Prosper Synergies, then yes. We don't play Prosper in this, <laughs> in this house. <laughs> is this card good? I don't think it's good, but all right. Yeah, sure. I think I think it's like, mediocre in even those decks, right? Like, it's, so it's the, okay. the adventure side, like, you can just play Finale of Devastation, right? Like, it does the same thing, but, like, way better, right? Because you can fetch uh, out of your graveyard or library. And then it's just, like, a 7-mana seven 7-7 seven, seven trample, and then you have to have something in Exile, right? So... It's like conditional on top of that. You know, if you do have something, then, you know, it's decent. But if you don't, then it's it's kind of trash, right? So the, uh, the thing that blows my mind is how we were so though. high on Beadstock Giant that was it literally a 7-7-7 seven <laughs> seven, seven, <laughs> without Trample or any upside. Because, and we're like, oh, that card the, is busted. And now ramp, we have these, like, the Trampers that get things for strong, free. And we're right? like, yeah, and no. Is one of the uh, we, could have just, we could have just green <laughs> Zenith for a better <laughs> Beadstock Giant. <laughs> We could have freeze us up for the crater. You think this is better no. than Beanstalk Giant? I don't know if it's uh, better, but it's, I think the same a, argument should apply, right? Of like, like, like it's even the, the most early... garbage ramp spell is like leagues ahead of almost every other like card yeah, in Magic Gathering okay. because ramp yeah, is I guess, so strong, yeah. right? It's and the fact that you get a free body on it is like even more upside. Where this is like a dirty beater that you yeah. can replace with another dirty beater. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Yeah, I guess the adventure mode on Beanstalk is better. Ramping beats the, like, janky card draw, th- whatever that actually is mode. Yeah, all right, all right, C's fine. Like, I, I do kind of like this card, but I don't know where I'd play it outside of, like, adventures, essentially. Do we like it better than all the other C cards? Is this a low B, I, I think it's C? literally a B. It's, it's good in, in two specific archetypes. All nope. right, Krim, you break the tie, C or B. <laughs> I don't know if Adventures is popular enough for me to consider to be. I think it's a a low. It's actually a C. It's very much so a C. All right, it's right on the top bo- of the C. One is fair. toe. Yeah, it's got I mean, one yeah. toe. Yeah. Don't matter. We don't have <laughs> definitions over here. Good and specific decks means nothing. Apparently, <laughs> they can't be so specific that there's like five decks. Okay, specific <laughs> decks that yeah. people play. Like humans <laughs> is a specific deck. Okay, but like there's Fine. lots of human decks, right? Or like Fine. Voltron we, is specific. To, I, but there's a lot of them, right? Justice we, for Emerald Dragon. <laughs> Yeah, we it, need to add it, it one more like tier. We need to musical. add a friend for Emerald Dragon. Can we, we do it? Uh, we need to add one more tier that's good in Six Drop Tribal or with Changelings. <laughs> like basically the two Tomer decks. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. This might oh, be God. a friend. Brazen Borrower. Okay? Brazen Borrower. Uh, constructed this All-Star. This card cooks. Fairy Rogue. <laughs> two mana instant. Return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. 
And then three mana, three one flash flying can only block creatures with flying. House. Is this House. worth playing outside of Rogue? No. This is <laughs> one more one. I guess. Those cards what? unplayable. No, okay, you're just y'all are just saying that. It doesn't even block, so you can't even use no, that body dude, to Y'all block. are just trolling. Y'all are just trolling so, this is, so this hard. A, it's, a, a it's a boomerang, <laughs> and it has a useless body. <laughs> this is like one of the best constructed adventures. So I will give it that. Sure. In sixty card formats, this card's legit awesome. In commander, I think this card is kind of trash. I, I can see an argument for fairies or rogues playing it. Outside of that, I think this card is like actually emerald dragon friend level. <laughs> All right. If if like if like Tim Tim Kiali Hunter is too too narrow, then being only good in rogues and fairies is fairies. The, uh, is no, this flyers. is a bounce. This is a, a bounce deck? in any flyers. De- like you want to run this as your it. flyer no. deck? I don't know. Would you? <laughs> if, it's, if not not bird, it's not even a bird. Richard, it's not even a bird. Niche? No, no. I feel no, no, like no, no, I, the adventure side's would not you even. Play niche. boomerang though, crib. Like I mean, yeah, you could use it, but like this is not an exciting adventure, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I 90, have played boomerang. 1995 magic. <laughs> I feel like I would. I would rather play like into the royal or something. Like if I really wanted a bounce spell, I think I'd rather draw a random card from my deck than a three one that can't block look if i was if i was building a fairy deck or a rogue deck i would jam this easily but outside of that i, I why? feel like i'm trying to cut this out of my fairy or rogue deck as well <laughs> yeah like, even in so, fairies and rogues it's, it's like so fringe. mediocre that even if it made the cut i'm like actively looking to like get rid of this <laughs> oh so, okay okay is it bone crusher okay better or worse than bone crusher kind of the same thing right like it's weird so much better than interaction bone spell and then like kind of mediocre body but in blue. So do we like Better it than more bone or worse? Pressure. Better it than depends bone on pressure? how much you hate the one ring, I think. Yeah, I guess it depends on the one ring. Why would you bounce the one ring? They'll just recast it and get protection. <laughs> no, 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 I'm oh, saying, no. like, if, if the one ring has been terrorizing your meta, then I would oh, run bone, oh, crusher bone Crusher giant over it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, near Bone Crusher makes sense. They're, they're similar constructed so cards that are similarly <laughs> janky and commander. Grim is dying here, but we don't <laughs> yeah, all play Demir every week with fairies <laughs> It's not even it's just like oh my god I would play it in almost okay of the adventures there ain't no way this isn't one of the better ones that don't just fall into a niche column the bounce is so nice like it's able to save you from random all right, things all right, Krim, here, here's a test giant killer or brazen borrower they're both in the same tier. I, they're oh both God. in the so same both, tier. Both in the trash. I mean, I don't even really like targeted removal. And bounce is like targeted removal that doesn't kill the thing. It's very hard for me to wrap my mind around liking bouncing something like, in if Commander. If the body was better, I could see an argument for it. But the body can't block. I guess you could like slap it down and use it to carry a sword. Dagger. It does flip a dowsing dagger. It does flip a dowsing dagger. Those are the magic words. You can clamp Y'all it. Y'all are wild. You Y'all are just wild. <laughs> You can skull clap it. It dies yeah, to right. field hazard, though, so we gotta watch out. I mean, maybe there's a B argument, but yeah, I'm I'm okay with it being in C. Okay. Uh, oh, what is this? Horn of Valhalla, I think this is called. So the Horn of Valhalla is from Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. X, white, white, sorcery. Create X, white, soldier, creature tokens. And then uh, it's an equipment, two mana, white, Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. Equip three. This card slaps in go-wide decks. Like, the it, the amounts of pumps is out of control. And the fact that not only does it pump a lot, like, it also just, you can dump a lot of mana and make a big go-wide army. Like, go-wide, I don't think is a very, very niche, niche, niche. Uh, archetype. A lot of a lot of decks are go wide. <laughs> this is much so, more common than <laughs> yes. Than and giant this one's tribal. really good. Every single time I see it, I'm impressed. Yeah, if I'm trying to make a bunch of tokens or go wide with humans or whatever, I think this is a really good card. And I think the equipment is actually like pretty relevant. Both modes are relatively fairly priced on this one. So in those decks, I think it's very good. They might actually deserve to be like at the higher end of the bees. Really, I think it's one of the. It's probably the best bee we've seen. Is this I the straight up don't. I wouldn't even play this in my my like aggro deck. Do you what? not play it in humans or anything, Krim? Do you not no, play it in? Like, it I know it's a human deck. Lot. It makes soldiers. It makes soldiers. It, it makes oh, soldiers. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but even then, like, no, like this. This is like kind of hot doo doo, right? No way. 
No. I, I mean, if you're, I think if you're in a go white, white token, making Zach, X creatures is never hot doo doo, right? Like, that's always. So you could get better by doing instant speed, right? But, like, sorcery speed is still quite passable. And then the equipment's pretty good, too, no? Like, yep. No, you don't play this? I mean, you don't play no, humans. Why, it doesn't what? make humans. But, like, a go wide, no, white no, but, like, none of. None of my aggro decks would like play this unless it's specifically like it has maybe, to be like a tokens go wide yeah. soldiers yeah a token deck sure so then that'd be a pretty niche card I guess but so many go wide token decks yeah what? tokens is a pretty popular yeah. deck, I think is pretty... okay then and then you also I get mean, soldiers look. on top of that where it's probably worth it there like I personally run it on Othari it's uh like whenever it attacks it makes a bunch of rebel tokens that are tapped in attacking so you could make a big army of this or uh later on you just equip it onto Othari you make a bunch of tokens and all of those pump Othari and you can like do some serious damage with it but that's not like I don't think that's a one off either it's just like if I'm in a go wide tokens deck I'm probably going to be running this card All right we'll just slap it in the front of B for, for all you soldier and go wide, yeah. white weedy, like spirit companion. Oh, loves it. Okay. <laughs> twining, <laughs> twining twins from Wilds of Eldraine. Tw- twinning, twinning twins. It's twining. There's only is it one twining end. or twinning? Yeah, it is. It's only one like end. twining. Technically is twining. Yeah, YouTube pointed that out a few times. So two yeah, yeah, yeah. Twinning would white be instant. Two ends. Exile target non-token creature. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. And then it's a blue four mana four four flying vigilance ward one. Twining twins. How do you like twining twins? Fine. It's okay. I think this is again like just fairies. <laughs> and not even then. It's not even good like, in fairies because fairies? fairies are the mirror. I think I would um, be ooh. I hadn't really thought about like fairies. I was thinking more for like blink style decks or panormonicon like style decks Dago, where the Panormonicon. Yeah, like that. Like blinking until end of turn also saves you from a wrath, which is an upside in some scenarios. You can save your most important creature. So that's where I'd be looking at it. I think I, I would at least try it in like a Brago or Rune style Blink Panther Monocon deck. Whether or not it makes the cut, I don't know, because I'm not really hyped about a 4-4 Flying Vigilant Ward 1. Like that doesn't do anything with my Panther Monocon deck, but I do like the Blink mode on it. And then you get a body out of it. So I think it's like low B for me for Blink decks. Do you have space? in your blink deck for this type of blink though because like there's momentary blink and there's like eerie interlude that's mass and then there's i think another four one that also bounces everything and they all come with plus one plus one counters like i feel like that's true i feel like there's so many ephemerate you know is also so maybe it's just yeah maybe the upside of the body is actually not enough in practice hmm yeah you might be you actually might be right and i had to cut so many good blink spells like, I, I would not run a two-mana single-target blink. There's, like, just so many better ones that this doesn't excite me. Like, what about wizards? You well, could, usually white is uh, awkward for wizards, you right? Blink, snapcaster mage. Like, I don't know. Like, do, do wizards care to be blinking themselves? I don't know. The body is just so mediocre. Like, fairies yeah. doesn't really care about this. If wizards doesn't care about this, who cares about this? I know Krim likes it. Krim's not I, Twining twins is... I don't know, like, is it, it like it, if fairies is blue? Is, is not blue black, right? It's blue white. Yeah, yeah it's blue white. Its colors I'm like, are awkward. I'm not huge on it, to be honest. It's like it's okay, I guess. All right, we're just gonna leave it and see. Yeah. Mediocre. See whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. This is no, you're still you putting it above it Emerald Dragon. You're putting it <laughs> yes. above yes, Emerald Dragon. Yes, actually, like, yes, yes, everything yes. is above Emerald Dragon. Emerald Dragon is the worst card we've I ever am. talked about. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you really think Emerald Dragon is better than this? No. <laughs> would you? Would you at least try out Emerald Dragon? You're never no. trying out this. If I play Emerald Dragon, Emerald Dragon. Tribal, I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You okay? Okay, Seth. You love Mana Tide. You're like I run Mana Tide everywhere. Don't you want to get your? I didn't know Tomer was so attached to this. Yeah, I didn't either. Tomer really loved this emerald dragon <laughs> like the moment the moment somebody you counter has to. an either flex or has a far with its ability <laughs> that does sound like a just, good moment that's a I... high you're never going to attain again all right <laughs> okay wait what is this blue spell i don't know what it is guys help me <laughs> iltheid harvester or something like <laughs> Ilthead that Ilthead harvester okay uh oh this one this one's interesting card is gas sorcery is x it? blue blue tap x target creatures they don't untap during their next controllers uh next untap step Five mana, four, four. When it enters the battlefield, turn any number of target tapped non-token creatures face down. They're two, two horror 
creatures. Uh... I gave it a D. You guys gave it all B. Are you really playing this as a blue sweeper? Like, no way. No way. Dude, it's, it's good, a cool it's sweeper. It's good against, like, commanders because it's like, oh, yeah. the commander your deck is built around is now a 2-2. But it has to be tapped, so you usually have to use Adventure Side. And the problem with Adventure Side is that it's very telegraphed. Like, you're not going to be able to, like, tap down a bunch of stuff. And then on the same turn, do your five drops. Well, so you, like, it's you done. Tap it's done. So you can tap it. And then yes. there's like one yeah. turn. It doesn't untap. But then so everybody then has a turn it. cycle to be like, all right, my sh- my crap <laughs> that just got tapped down is about to turn into a horror next turn. <laughs> so like, let's save a counter spell or something for it. You know, like. You can kind of see it coming. It, what it's is definitely yeah. telegraphed. Oh, right. Like, what's the old school you can just one? get people with the five mana. Ixidron uh, or something. Like, Ixidron. Ixidron. Like, yeah. Ixidron. like when you I just play like... this and be done with it, like <laughs> Ixidron hits everybody, but like yeah. is it the same mana? Like I think it's this is better than Ixidron probably, but I don't play Ixidron anymore. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Ixidron, Ixidron, Ixidron is the kind of card time. I used to play when I first started playing Commander, and it was like, oh, it's a blue wrath or whatever. I feel like this is kind of similar to me, where like ten years ago I might be hyped about this, but as it is, I'm kind of like, eh, maybe in my you know horde deck. Good in Hilda. I put it in Hilda. <laughs> I put it in Hilda. Yeah, yeah, you tap everything down and then and then you Nefnis. harvest them. That's actually really good. Oh Ooh, yeah, in a Hilda deck that'd be sweet. Oh yeah, it's yeah. good in Hilda, although not on Magic Online. Sadly, I learned building Ooh. Hilda. So, so y'all still think this was a B? You like this? Like, there's no this way. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I, well, mean, I thought it's B was a no, specific it's... deck, so I was thinking about, like, specifically Hilda. But it, it might be too specific. too specific. Yeah. That's very specific. So I guess... Then I'm going to put it below Emerald Dragon. <laughs> Wait, whoa, I... whoa. No, no, nothing goes below Emerald Dragon. <laughs> I actually agree. I actually Emerald agree Dragon is no. justice. No. What? Well, then I'm going to bump no, it up to dude. an A. <laughs> so by the law of averages, it gets ahead of Emerald Dragon. <laughs> Damn. Do you actually think it's good, though? Are, are we arguing where it is in D tier, or do you guys actually think it's stronger than that? I mean, I, I got sweet. got by it once at a command fest. So someone actually played this card against me and actually, like, wrathed everyone's board with it, and it actually worked. So I've never seen Emerald Dragon. I know Tomer has once, but I've never seen Emerald Dragon actually be put in a deck outside of Tomer's six like, they, tribal they deck. People do play this with card. With their no? Like, <laughs> it's, it's like not cool, right? Like, you're still getting hit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but if you if you make your your opponent's commander at two two and then they have to go around and kill it just to like, recast it, that's pretty good. Okay, how about like, like in the front of Emerald the Dragon mode where like you sleep someone's creatures and then someone else alpha strikes them and kills them? Like I, I think that's yeah. like actually the thing you're trying to do here. Like I tap all Crim's creatures and then Tomer just like smashes them and kills them. But as a wrath, like this is so sad. I would play like anything over this to try to sweep the board. At least put it in front of Emerald Dragon and then I won't complain it's anymore. Like, yeah, it, it, <clears throat> I think it's at least oh, okay. warranting of a oh, seat. I'm by Tover. Oh, Tover may be crazy, but he's right. No. Emerald Dragon, is a six man of four four, no. is much better than whatever this mediocre Wrath is trying to do. What? Oh, no. Okay. I feel, I feel weird okay. teaming up with Richard, but okay. they're, they're tied. They're, they're holding hands. Okay. okay. They're tied. Okay. That's I just want sure. Emerald Dragon and see where it belongs. <laughs> okay. Uh, Monster Manual. Three mana sorcery. Mill five cards, then return a creature card milled this way to your hand. Four mana artifact, pay, uh, pay two mana, tap it. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Is this good? Just drop a creature into play. This has a lot of hype in spoiler season. And I do think it's good. I do think it's good. But, like, I think it's just okay, actually. Yeah, so yeah. The, the mill yeah, you, ha- you have to mill the creature you want to return, right? So this is not a free yeah. mill. You have to yes. get it. And then it'll be six mana to drop something onto the battlefield. A creature specifically. Wait, what's what's Quicksilver Amulet? Like f- It's the same mm. thing. Four, mana. The same four and four. Thing. Is it four yeah. and two? No, it's four, four and four. four, and four. It's, so it's this more is expensive. better than Quicksilver Amulet. But, yeah. I but you gotta be I have never seen. When's the last time I you haven't seen Quicksilver, Quicksilver Amulet? Amulet. Yeah. 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 I remember this is pretty popular when I started playing. Yeah, I, I don't so think I it's... played it and then I took it out. <laughs> or what about it's Elvish good. Piper? I guess yeah, people Elvish just don't Piper play this style of card it. anymore, right? Like in because general, you, you need to drop something really big to make it worth it, and it has to be a lot more yeah. than six for you to like go through all this trouble, right? Yeah, you have the big, like, you have the big, be like big top end creatures dot deck. Like if you were like a Kalia deck, for example. Which can't even run like, it because it's not in green. Uh, yeah, the problem is you play this, and everyone's like, "Oh, we gotta kill him, <laughs> right?" Like, who knows what's coming down, right? <laughs> the fear so, of the unknown. 
Like, it's very it's hard like, to get this to go off because you're like, oh, I have nothing, guys. I'm just playing. With, but like, nah, man, they're going to kill you because you could top deck anything and, and drop it. But, like, why are you playing this if you're not cheating something ridiculous into play? So this puts so the first activation is six mana, essentially. Four to cast and then yeah. two to activate. So you need to have this in your hand and at least, like, two, three creatures that are, like, eight plus mana in your hand. So it's just kind of, like, clunky to pull it off. It is Some nice that maybe, it draws you but... a card. Like, compared to Quicksilver, Amulet, or whatever, Alvish Piper, like, it does kind of help dig for the big thing, although it's going to be inconsistent. It, it reveals your trump card. Like, imagine you, <laughs> you mill people, some, yeah, like, people 12 know. mana bomb, and people are like, oh, <laughs> Man, I see you have a monster <laughs> manual in exile, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Maybe you have, like, I you have, like, your draw stalker your deck, then it's fine. It's just, like, a little bit clunky. This is, like, like, 20, like 2015 right. Seth, where he's like, I'm going to win next turn, guys. Yeah. Like, this is kind of like, putting all your cards on the table before you've done anything <laughs> and then hoping you get to untap with it it's kind of tough plus so, you just ramp into a, your finishers now like isn't that better yeah. to just ramp into yeah. them rather than try to yeah. ramp them into play better. yeah see so, probably so, like, stock giant in, confirmed better <laughs> if i was in balloona no i wouldn't even put it in balloona maybe cool. like yeah i was thinking maybe do i put it in an adventure deck Adventure is you know like, what? Actually, a lot of the adventure. I mean, if you if you had a lucky clover oh. and edge wall innkeeper, all, all of these cards become a lot. Yeah, better, I guess right? that's well, true. Like, I I actually do think it's it's good in the adventure deck, just because if you look at all the adventure creatures we have on our list, they're all like overcosted by like a million. <laughs> like Beastock Giant is seven, you know, Realm Club Dragon seven, I... the Hunter was seven, you know, like. These are all expensive creatures, so I actually yeah, think... Sounds like yeah. a case for a hunter, then. Cast them for zero mana, right? <laughs> can, can she or Brazen Borrower win to play at a discount? Seems, seems yeah, like okay. the, the okay. hunter's better. Above but... or below Brazen Borrower? Above. Above, yeah. Okay. Monster Manual. Quick yes. 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 Crim is, That's probably fine. Are you yeah. muted? Crim and Shambles. <laughs> Crim and Shambles. It doesn't even make sense! <laughs> I was just seeing him silently rage on his webcam. <laughs> okay, last <laughs> There's card. There's no way. Kellen the Fey Blooded. Uh, this is from Wilds of Eldraine. So, two My mana boy. sorcery in white. Search your library for an aura or equipment card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Then it's a three mana 2-2 two, two human fairy uh, with double strike. It's red. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. Oh boy. I'm gonna just drop it into like, I mean possibly S. Like A. This is like my... cracked. I mean it's uh, definitely one it's of the best so equipment cards. It's right? open like... the armory with like this random, like super undercosted body on top of it. And open the armory is a very good card that sees play, right? The only thing restricting this is that it's a Boros card. Well, but and that it, it's a pretty sword. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it's it's a good it's a good card that sees commander play, like a lot of commander play. Open the armory, yep. and then it has an extra bonus. And the nice thing about the body too is not only does it help like go wide decks in a way, but it has double strike. Just this so the the floor of it is like you find something that has like a combat trigger, then you cast Kellen, equip the combat trigger equipment or aura onto it and then get double the triggers like a you know, sword like, like a sword <laughs> right? or whatever like, which it fetches which it and the fetches. other cool thing is that if it's your commander you can do like hidden commanders based on a specific aura or equipment like if you want to make a spy kit deck for example <laughs> you can make a spy kit deck where kellen just finds it constantly or if you're doing like blood forge battle axe dot deck because you like that card then you can have <laughs> kellen as your commander and always find Blood Forge Battle Axe, mm-hmm. like, for two mana, very consistently. Or, or but what if uh, obviously, you, if you're enlightened, you, you go for Cauldra. Or what if you, yeah, commander. why not assemble Cauldra? It seems like, is yeah. this the best Cauldra commander, Tomer? I, I still like Akiri, just because I think she's more consistent. But, like, if I was trying to rush out Cauldra, uh, yes, that's that would be Kellen. I mean, so... I could see an argument for this being S, just because it can be your commander. And I think this will be a pretty popular Boros equipment commander. So I think it's, like, a fine card in the 99 to tutor up, like, and open the armory. And this is also, unlike any of the other cards we talked about today, something you can build your entire deck around. So maybe that bumps it to S if we're including, like, the fact that you can also use it as the the leader of your deck. Yeah, 
I th- that's pretty sweet, right? Like this is now just a way for you to tutor or something out. Uh, Having a tutor like, in your command, command zone is kind of wild. Like that's uh, yeah. we don't usually get spells as our commanders. So a repeatable tutor, like really good Sunforger commander, or spy kit commander, or cauldron Ooh, commander, Sunforger commander. You'll yeah. always have dousing dagger. Always, <laughs> always have dousing, always dagger. Have dousing always. dagger. Turn three it's dousing nuts. dagger. And then on the battlefield, it's fine. Like so it's going to be a big double striker. Six percent of decks. It's in a lot of decks. Open the armor. So this like basically just goes in every Boros deck, and it's like a one card combo because you do this, you fetch an equipment, you play this, you equip the equipment, and you go to town. Uh, and you can always fetch like the indestructible equipment or whatever. Like you can protect your commander, you can fetch boots on. or something if you really felt like it, and then you can obviously fetch any swords or combat triggers. So I think this is ultra staple. I think you play mm. this in any Boros deck because. Any any oh, Boros really? deck will take a hmm. you, you Don't you play Hearth and Home, Sword of the Animus, Dousing Dagger in like every deck? Eh. Eh, I play them yeah. in some decks, but I also don't usually play tutors for them. I don't know. Even if I'm playing like a random, like but do you want to be powering down your deck? No. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but like, you need to. Do you want to tutor mass. up your Lightning Greaves or like tutor up like the couple? Yeah. If you're playing just a yes. couple of random equipment, you are you gonna play a greaves, tutor to find it? Is it super critical that you have Lightning Greaves if you're playing it in your deck? Don't you don't you want it? Some decks. Well, you still need to have like four targets for this to be in your deck, right? Before well, you, you want to run four it. Targets. Well, well, you just have one. Because like, well, you might draw. Like, well, what if you draw it? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you have to. Have and then more I guess you get a Kellen. Yeah, you get a Kellen. Yeah. And then you get a Kellen. I don't know if I'm as high on it as Richard. I think it's very good. I would definitely play in any Boros equipment deck, and I think some generic Boros decks. But I don't know if I'm running in like just a fire song and sun speaker or whatever like just yeah. naming random like boros commanders the good news is boros is very equipment heavy if you look at equipment commander or like a uh, boros many of them are equipment decks so i think this fits in a lot of boros decks but i think there's some i wouldn't really run it in i'm just I, thinking I now you have a, a perma commander right if you like like it, let's not lie boros decks are kind of the same for the most part this is this feels like exactly what most of the boros decks want to do so <laughs> Look, Seth, didn't you say Sword of Forger Frontier is, like, S-tier? So, mm, if you're playing probably. colors to tutor it up and have a body to equip and trigger it, like, wouldn't you totally do that every single time? Even if all you had was a Forge, a, a Sword of Forger Frontier? Like, oh, you have? It's like open the Armory, one of the best white cards. And then staple this, like, super aggressive, <laughs> like, body that's, like, synergistic and really good to it, like... I mean, you also have Stoneforge, right? Which, like, kind of does the same thing, but better if you're just getting swords. Or, like, so maybe you also have that. Like, yeah, I mean, I think it's very good. I think it's a very good card that... I don't know if I played just to tutor up my Sword of Forge in Frontier, but I do think this card is pretty bomby. And if we want to put it in S tier, I wouldn't wouldn't argue against it. Just because it can be a commander. And I think having a tutor as your commander is actually kind of busted. What are it's what are our nice. final grades then? I'm an A, Seth's an A. Krim, where do you put it? I think I put it at an A as well. I had it initially at an A, and I, I think it'll stay there. It's it's solid. It's just a solid card. Right. Better than Decadent Dragon? Any... I mean, I put it in S, but I'm out of it. I mean, oh. I, mean I, I, I think Decadent Dragon, yeah, it definitely gets eclipsed by Kellen. Yeah, Kellen's number one. Close between the no, two. Yeah. yeah. I I would argue, I would put it to S. I would join Richard. Chat GPT. Okay. <laughs> All Break right. our tie. All right, here we go, Seth. <laughs> Fine, let's hey. You know what the benefit of hosting the podcast and controlling yes, the speed you can is? Control the you can do whatever you want. It's a matter of power. <laughs> okay, so right. yeah, so high A as summer, a very good card. It's a good you, card. How you want to interpret it if you want to play it. Maybe you think. You know, it, it, it gets got by opposition agent, right? There, there's always that's there's true. Always that's that's true. true. Unplayable it gets, now. Unplayable. It gets got by Emerald Dragon. Actually, that's not true. So, that is our tier list. Th- those are the adventures. There, there are lots of adventures. We actually cut like a ton of adventures. We, we try to find the most playable ones and the most interesting ones. Uh, so let us know in the comments if we skipped uh, any adventure that you think is highly playable. Uh, maybe some six drops that can join Dragon. No, Dragon. Uh, Emerald Dragon. Uh, there, there are some uncommon ones that I think are pretty... Justice for Emerald like, There are some pretty good, because they're all two-for-ones. So in the right deck, they generate value, right? It's just sometimes they're so niche, we don't want to talk about them. But, you know, someone Unlike out Brazen there is Bar playing or... six-drop tribal. Someone <laughs> is playing a fairy rogue deck that wants to bounce everything, right? So they're or in nearly two-for-ones. 
or or needs a bounce or know. somebody's playing a six drop deck and yeah. you know That's wants to way more them. niche <laughs> so so let us know in the comments uh any cards we missed if you disagree uh i'm curious how how people rank the five virtues uh if we got it right if we got that order right uh and uh, a giant killer i think is the controversial one here that we have no agreement on well what do you think of giant killer does it deserve a slot in your deck card is cracked <laughs> Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you all back here next week. Card is cracked. See you, everyone.